hello. As you know, you guys know I quit a job just recently, so I'm going to explain to you exactly why I quit a job. And I want you to tell me the reasons I should have kept it and the reasons I should have quit. First of all, what I basically did was greet people at the end of the day, or you know, or they do their shopping or whatever, and then I, you know, I greet them on the way out, exit greeter. You know, I check their materials or whatever and mark the, you know, stuff they bought. You know, and that's it. So that's what I was supposed to be doing, an exit greeter. This job was about, I say about fifteen mile drive every day. 15 miles there, if that's 30 miles total, 30 mile drive, commute uh, back and forth. And the job, you know, drug test for the job, make sure your shit is uh, good, and a criminal background check. Um, I passed both, of course, you know, the drugs and the criminal background check, because I'm legal. Um, well, the problem is the pay was $8 an hour. Is that a reason to quit a job for eight dollars an hour, knowing that you got to drive thirty miles, you know, in a day, and gas is three dollars and seventy-four cents a gallon? I think it was uh, when I started that job. It might be higher now. This is California, but we pay the most for everything and get the least out of everything. You feel me? Maybe you don't. So, um, this is what's happening. So I quit the job. Not because of the eight dollars an hour, not because of the thirty, uh, you know, mile commute, uh, you know, not because of the wear and tear on the car. There was intangibles in this job. The management team wanted me to pretty much keep an eye on the employees. In other words, if I see these guys doing something, I see this lady doing something, I see this guy doing something, let the management know for eight dollars an hour now take it the community I live in is a mixed community there's a lot of each kind of people here and there's a lot of each kind of people at that job but think about it eight dollars an hour to be a corporate spy spying on employees um, that's weird for eight dollars an hour, someone expects you to dig into the lives of these six or seven people that you're surrounded with and tell them for eight dollars an hour what these people are doing, thinking, and saying about them behind their backs. First three days, I'm like, you know, I'm only going to be here three days. So if the guy asks me some questions, I'll verify his questions with, you know what's going on. You know who's doing what. Yeah, I think you got them this time. Basic shit. But in between that time and then, the first three days, of course, I caught the guy stealing. I, you know, I told you guys about that, how he had shit under his jacket. I'm in the motherfucking Mercedes Benz. That guy. After that, they love me. I'm the greatest thing on earth. You know, a black guy with balls like a goddamn Brahma or Angus. You know. So, of course, me being the person I am, you know, it's like, shit, fuck that. I ain't no motherfucking rat. You know, fuck that shit. So, me being the person I am, I'm trying to enlighten the kids. Tell the kids, man, this motherfucker's about to take you motherfuckers down. Stop doing what you're doing, man. This shit ain't worth it. This motherfucker trying to send you to the big P, the pen, trying to shut you down. For what? You got families and shit to take care of. This shit ain't worth it. And before I left, yeah, there wasn't nobody doing nothing in front of me. Things had changed, but then there's more drama. Now this other guy sees, you know, hey, they like this guy. Let me fuck with homeboy. Yo, dog, how you feeling, man? What's up, Fitty? What's up, Fitty Sin, yo? All that shit. I, I don't speak like that. That's not me. So now... I got the bad side, the good side, and my job to uphold. What do you do? For eight dollars an hour, I did what every man would do. I looked at how many fucking gas receipts I had. No, that was too much fucking money. I looked at what the people was offering me on the dark side. No, that is not enough money. 
And then I looked at what the person was actually paying me for being there. I'm like, shit. I'm going home. Because I ain't the motherfucking police. I ain't no corporate spy. I ain't a rat. And I ain't a fink. I enlightened the kids. I exposed the man. And I told him, man, you need to fix your shit. You can't get it like this. I accomplished everything I set out to do in that motherfucker. I fixed the crime problem. I taught the kids a lesson. And the man, fuck the man. The man needs to understand that you need to get some shit done on your own. And $8 an hour ain't gonna make you, ain't gonna break you. And it damn sure ain't gonna get you what you fucking need. So what did you actually get for the $8 an hour? I'm gone. I'm out of there. No drama. I'm not gonna join the dark side. Get change. Steal crumbs. Go to jail for fucking crumbs. Rat on my people. Become a raton. Snitch. Eight dollars. People think black people fucking stupid. Or anybody. It's fucking dumb. You have to weigh everything in life and everything in business. Weigh that shit out. Now, you can say whatever you want to about the kids that were doing the bad shit over at that place. But do you take them guys out of that place and then you get rid of all the regulars? The regulars that help you make your numbers every day. See, that's one thing they showed me in the two weeks I was there. They showed me how the projections and everything was made. They showed me this big chart. You might not understand it, but I did understand the chart. And like I told those guys before I even saw the chart, everything here is based on a number. And if the man don't see his numbers add up, he's coming for your ass to make sure he get his. And before I left, I saw the numbers change. And that's the job calling me back again. I know it. How can I help you? Yes? How you doing? Pretty good. Okie dokie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Dickie. Oh yeah, I'm fine with that. You know, I'm fine. I've, I've been, I be sitting here by myself a lot all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. I will. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Apparently, they want me to come back to work. They need me there. They had got to have me there. My job, I pretty much told them exactly what I told you. I am not going back in that motherfucker. I'm being pulled from three different directions, and the only direction I want to do is go upside that one motherfucker's head for calling me 50 Cent. What's up, 50? How you doing, 50? What's up, yo? I think that's bullshit. I just want respect. I want to be able to go to a job without black man syndrome. That's when you ask a black man for every fucking thing. You ask the black man, you know where I can find some dope? You know where I can get some pussy? You know a black woman that will screw a Mexican guy? You know a black woman that mess with an old white guy? You know where the whores are? No, I don't know what the motherfucking holes are. I don't know what a dope is, and I can't fucking help you. I hate black man syndrome. The nigga always know where the shit is, how to get something, how to do something. No, we don't. We don't give a fuck about no dope, no bitches, none of that shit. So let us alone sometimes. I hate black man syndrome. We need to stop that shit. Until next time, I will tube you later. I slipped and said tune something one day. It's tube.